Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Kashif Kamran and today I'm having a very important discussion uh, with all of you pertaining to the AAA and SBL examiner answers. Now, uh, almost every day uh, when your exams are coming nearer, there is a lot of questions uh, which comes from students asking that uh, when I compare my answers with examiner answers, uh, I, I sort of get demotivated or I get stressed out uh, because uh, I cannot match my answers uh, with the examiner answer or uh, what I am writing is too less in comparison to what the examiner is writing. Now, first of all, uh, there are a lot of confusions uh, which has been created among the student community uh, in terms of uh, examiner answers, and they're probably not using the examiner answers in the right manner. Uh, if you just write an answer to a question yourself, and you go down and you just open the examiner answer for the same question, and you start to compare the answer written by the examiner with your answer, uh, you will get demotivated. I, I totally agree with you. And you will get stressed out. I totally agree with you. And you will start losing track that as if you are not well prepared for the upcoming exams. And, and you start to get uh, and you start to lose ground, uh, which you must have gained by now in terms of your exam preparation. Now, I always tell students that when you write an answer, yourself. Now, how would you go about evaluating that what you have written? Uh, is it right? Is it wrong? Now, first of all, you should understand that in a theoretical paper like AAA and SBL, uh, when you are explaining a point, uh, every student uh, has his or her way of explaining a point, justifying a point, giving arguments or exercising judgments or giving sound reasonings or giving justification that why you think this was an important point. Now, definitely that explanation will never agree with examiner. Uh, if, for example, I always tell this to my student that there are like 10 students uh, picking up the same point uh, and myself, picking up the same point and uh, the 10 student and myself, uh, we all start writing the answer on a similar point. For example, we start writing uh, a point deferred taxation and we think there is a risk in deferred taxation and we start writing the answer. We will all have different uh, explanation to the same point. Uh, we'll have a different way of answering it. Uh, probably we're all trying to tell what is the underlying risk in deferred taxation but we're all writing in a different manner. And some of you, uh, some of us might write in like three sentences, some might be writing in four, some might be writing in five because everyone has a different style of writing. Uh, some drag a point, some just summarizes a point so beautifully that it gets winded up in like three sentences. Uh, and for some students, because they're not very well equipped with the English language, so just, just keep dragging the answer uh, till the time they get satisfied looking at a big chunk of a paragraph under a point. Now, that is uh, the, the, the diversity we have in a, a theoretical answer. And a theoretical answer, there is no one right and wrong answer. And that is why uh, if examiner answer is the standard, and examiner is using that standard to mark the scripts, then logically, the passing rate for any given paper should be zero in a theoretical perspective for triple A and SPL. But that is not the case. We still have a good, we still have a good looking passing rate for SPL, which is around 50%, which we still have a reasonable passing rate for triple A, that is 33%. So why do, why do those 50% students or 33% student pass in? Because their answer has exactly reconciled with their examiner answer? Never. In an exam scenario, you are giving a new paper. In an exam scenario, you are facing a new case study and you are thinking, you are planning, and you're trying to do the best within the exam time to produce an answer. So do you believe what you're writing in the exam environment is exactly reconciling with the examiner answer? That is the reason you passed in? No. 
So first of all, we need to mitigate the concerns and the misconceptions and the myths the student have created around examiner answer. Firstly, I believe that the best way to evaluate yourself is to look at the points you picked in your answer versus the points examiner has picked in. Now, you also need to understand that, for example, if it is a 10 marks answer, and for example, the marking scheme is two, uh, and you know the marking scheme is two, and you need to pick up five points for a 10 marks answer. But when you see examiner number of points for a 10 marks answer, it might be seven, it might be eight, it might be 10. Why is the examiner writing more? Because examiner is trying to tell you that my answer is a tutorial guidance. And I'm trying to tell you that these were the available points in the case study, which could had been fetched. But examiner is not telling you that if I picked eight points for a 10 marks answer, so you need to pick eight points for a 10 marks answer, you still need to pick only the five points because the marking scheme is, for example, two marks per relevant point. So you need to pick five. Now, for example, you picked five and you go and you saw the examiner answer where examiner has written more than five. See, out of the five points you picked in, how many of them get reconciled with examiner points, not answer. So suppose you say 40% or you say 50% of my points get matched with examiner points. That's wonderful. 40 to 50% is good. Uh, if it is more than that, excellent. So 40 to 50% should give you the, uh, the motivation that yes, I am picking points and at least my points get reconciled with examiner points. I'm not looking at the way examiner explained the point. So that is the first thing you should all be doing. Secondly, uh, we just spoke of that the examiner will write more points because examiner is trying to tell that these were all the possible points which were in the case study. And if any student wrote any of these points, uh, you will be rewarded. But you are missing up a statement of the examiner. Examiner also write a statement that student will be awarded credit marks. If a student wrote a point, which is not mentioned in the examiner answer or which is not mentioned in the examiner points or which is not mentioned in the list in the marking scheme list, you will still be rewarded provided your point is logical. It has been identified from the case study and it has been well explained in the context of the case study. So uh, if the examiner picked up eight points and uh, you wrote a point in your answer, which you fail to find in the examiner eight points, your point would still be rewarded if it is logical, if it is identified from the case study and you would explain the point in the right perspective. So that is another thing you're missing out when you're evaluating the examiner answer. Two things you're missing out. Firstly, you are missing out the fact that examiner answers are tutorial guidance. Examiner is not writing an answer which is time bound in uh, three hours and 15 minutes for AAA or four hours for the SPL paper. Examiner is not looking at the marking scheme that for example, there are 10 marks. So I have to write five points, for example. The examiner is just writing as many points as possible which are identifiable from the case study so that examiner can give you learning that these are all the possible points which were in the case study which from which you could have written five, for example. So try to get out of that misunderstanding, which for some reason has been created. And there is a tendency of student reading, absorbing uh, the examiner answers without knowing the limitation of examiner answer, without knowing that examiner will give you credit for anything beyond examiner answer. Examiner will give you rewards if you wrote something which is in context of the case study. So you are not comparing examiner answer with your answer. You are comparing the point you identified with the point of the examiner. And 40 to 50% is a very good start uh, and moving on. So that is where the motivation can come in. That is where the, the, uh, the, the your stress level can go down. And that's where you start to believe con confident that what you are preparing, what you are writing, you're going on the ra ra right track. Because I, I get questions of so many students that my answer is not matching the examiner answer. 
my, even I've practiced five papers, six papers, my answer is not matching the examiner answer. The problem is answer matching. The, the solution is point matching. So the purpose of this session was just to give you the right direction that examiner answers is a good source of learning things. But mostly the students, most of the students are learning the wrong things from the examiner answer. Either they're learning that uh, for 10 marks, we need to write eight points or for 10 marks, we need to write 10 points. Either they're picking that thing out, which is going on the wrong side. You need to look into the marking scheme to see how many points you need to write. Or secondly, you're getting uh, impressed with the lengthy answers of examiner and you are trying to believe that we need to uh, replicate the same length on the day of exam to pass and in that way you are not completing the 100 percent paper so if you try to replicate the examiner answer and if you try to idealize the examiner answers at the end of the day you will not be completing the 100 percent paper then who is failing the paper not the examiner you so first of all read what the examiner has written it is a tutorial guidance and if you write something extra, which is not in the examiner answer, you will be rewarded. And then you have to read the examiner reports where the examiner criticized the weaker students and examiner appreciates the stronger student. Because if you just review the examiner answers in isolation without reading the examiner report, which is telling you how to write, what to write, uh, which is guiding you upon uh, what is the relevant marking schemes, if you're, if you're just looking at half the picture, you're not blending the examiner reports uh, when you're evaluating your answers. That is not the best way you are evaluating your answer at the end of the day. So please ensure that when you're using the examiner answer, you use them carefully and in the best possible manner. So I wish you all success and I hope uh, that this uh, short video would help you mitigate some of your concerns around examiner answer. Wish you all success. Take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.